Greetings. Good to see everyone this evening. Hope everybody's had a very blessed week so far. Enjoyed the sunshine, the rain, and now we've got more sunshine. And uh, God's just given us a mixed bag here lately. But the main thing is, God is good. He knows what He's doing. And He just has everything laid out for us if we can just learn to follow in the steps that he's appointed and again we're going in to do a little more study about the god's plan for us this will be part six and uh, so if you got your bible let's go to the second chapter of ephesians we're going to pick up where we left off last week and uh, I want to pick up back on, because we did verse 6 last week. I want to pick it back up. And it says, And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, when you think about it, why does God, why did God and why does God want us to sit in heavenly places? Well, the thing is, God does want us to be with him throughout eternity. He wants us to live with him, for him, while we're here on earth, and then afterwards spend eternity in the presence of God Almighty. And so, now, let's go to verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Now, the exceeding riches of his grace, and I've always said grace consists of three things. It's God's presence. It's God's power. And it's God's provision. It's in our lives uh, as he gives it. And, uh, and it begins the moment that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. God cannot share eternity with us if we're not with him. In other words, if we don't accept Jesus Christ, we can't expect to spend eternity in heaven and uh, not only does God have a plan for our lives here on earth but God's also got a plan once we get to heaven uh, now I've studied and, and I don't want to get into it but it's just like in heaven there is different levels there will uh, it's not it's not just like You'll just do whatever you want to do. Uh, no, there will be uh, a structure in heaven. And uh, with Jesus Christ being the head of it. And, uh, you know, I've always looked at it once I started uh, studying about heaven. Is that I'd rather be a servant here than to be a servant there. And uh, so uh, that's why I do what you can here to build your rewards up so that when you get to heaven, your rewards will help position you in a higher standard than just barely getting in. There's going to be a lot of people that just barely get in. They're going to find out, that, man, I didn't realize that it was more to it than just getting into heaven. Now. Just think of it like this. If God has a plan for our lives here on earth, and not only here, but a plan also of having an eternity, uh, also, you know, once we're born again, he has a plan throughout eternity for us. And, uh, but, the thing I'm trying to get at, I guess, is 
often we find ourselves in the middle of a mess, you know, whether it be sicknesses, finances, uh, personal problems, whatever it may be. And God has made a way for us to get through those things. And just as he's made a way for us to get through them here, it's his grace that gets us through. It's his presence. It's his provision. It is his uh, power that helps us to overcome, to endure, to be able to receive. And that's why you may be facing a hard time right now. And I know, I know of many friends, close friends and family that are going through some very difficult times. And, uh, and a lot of times there don't seem like there's no way out. It just sounds like it's all bad news. But yet God has a plan for you uh, to help get you out of the mess because he's already set in a, a place set for you in heaven and in eternity. If your future is secure, Surely isn't our present secure also? I remember Pastor Rod Parsley of uh, World Harvest Mountain uh, of uh, Columbus, Ohio. And uh, he talked about one time his when his son was born and uh, autistic and struggled, you know, and uh, Rod being believing in healings, miracles, and stuff like that, and and it really it tested his faith. And I remember him talking about reading as he's doing Bible study, reading Psalms twenty three verse six, and and as I was last night preparing for tonight's study, that Psalms came over. Uh, in my mind so I wrote it down David said surely surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever David understood the difficulties that he went through that God was with him. And not only was God with him, he understood that God had a plan. And sometimes it can be confusing. We don't understand why is this all happening to me? You know, sometimes people get thinking it's sort of like uh, Murphy's Law. If anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. And uh, uh, yet David, for umpteen years, lived in the cave, lived on the edge uh, with the enemy and everything, trying just to survive, even though he had been anointed to be king at a young age. And he found that God was faithful. God kept him safe. God protected him. God used him in a mighty way. And he went through some very difficult trials and tests. And he wasn't perfect. He messed up a time or two. Or more than that. We know of him, Bathsheba, and the way that he did Bathsheba's us and Uriah. And yet God still use David. And no doubt David will spend eternity in heaven, may be one of the praise leaders up in heaven because David knew how to praise God. You know, uh, he knew that the same God that helped him to get through being chased by King Saul and by the other enemies was the same God that was going to help him into eternal life. This verse also tells us something else. 
that there's more grace waiting for us in heaven than we've ever had in life. There is grace and more grace available in this life. So let's go to the next verse in verse uh, 8. For by grace you are, sa are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Huh. Now, with that said, James chapter 4, verse 6 says, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. God has a vault or a storehouse full of grace that we can't even imagine. There is so much grace to last through all ages to come. God's grace is inexhaustible if we could get that in our head. You know, uh, we struggle. You know, the disciples, well, Lord, how many times should we forgive somebody? Seven times? Jesus said, no, seven times 70. Instead of seven times, 490 times. No, one day. Why? Because God's grace, God's mercy. And, uh, and it's a gift of God. Now, with that said, we, when we read our common English, and Lord knows that English has never been my good subject. I struggled with it in, in school. And even today, I struggle with it. So when I come across words or sentences, I have to really do some digging to try and get the, the whole meaning out of it. And as I was reading last night, just like verse 8, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. Well, the Greek language is unique, that it has different tenses. Um, when we were doing our uh, uh, study in Revelation and everything, I got a, a, a set of books that breaks down the how the wording is it breaks it down whether it's past present whether it's uh different types and and just like with these two verses it has different tenses which can express the meaning of the sentences so well the rawest tense is the past is the regular past tense the imperfect tense means that the action happened in the past again and again a number of times at different intervals. The word saved in verse 8 is in perfect tense, which combines the past orist and the present tense into one tense. The action that takes place in the past, but the results continue up to the present time. So that means for what Jesus did, the grace that God has given us, isn't something that just we constantly are in demand of. It's always there for us. That's why God is always with us. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you unto the ends of the world. And, uh, uh, you know, grace and faith. Say, this is grace, this is faith. They fit together. You can't 
receive grace unless you apply faith. And when you apply faith, you get a hold of grace and you understand the presence of God, the, the provisions of God, the power of God in your life. And uh, God's grace, as it said there, grace, for by grace are you saved through faith. Well, we we get we receive grace through faith. Grace is God reaching out to us. Faith is our means of reaching out to Him. And when we reach out to God, His grace reaches us, and it's then. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. Now, right here was something that we typically, we would say, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. We would say, well, he's talking about grace, but he wasn't talking about grace. He was talking about faith. Do you remember the Bible tells us that God has given every man the I don't need no car warranty. I've had about a dozen of them calls today. Back to where it was. God, his word tells us in the New Testament that God has given every man the measure of faith. Every person that accepts has enough faith to be able to accept the grace of God. Every man, and and this, when I say man, it includes women, it includes children, uh, boys, girls, it includes our seniors. It doesn't matter who it is. All humanity has been given the measure of faith, enough faith to be born again and to receive the grace of God in his mercy. And, uh, you know, we, uh, the reason why it's not of ourself is that uh, we like to boast about, oh, did you see what I did? When all along, it's God that gets the glory. He's the one that saves us. He's the one that cleanses us. When we yield to him and apply the faith that he's given us to receive the gift of grace, that he's giving toward us, but we have to have faith to receive it. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12. I'm, in my Bible, I can just look over to the opposite page. Uh, it says, in whom, well, let's pick up a little. According to the eternal purpose which he purposed or proposed, in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. By the faith of him. Who's him? Jesus. We have the confidence, the boldness to be able to go to God. If you read in, uh, what is it in Hebrew, lest therefore come boldly to the throne of God, uh, grace and obtain mercy and find grace in a time of need. So it's something that it's God's given us, but we have to apply faith to receive it. And once we do, then it will help us. It may be our healing. 
It may be our finances. It may be our marriage. It may be, you know, our work. I mean, it can be a lot of different things. People go through all types of trials and, uh, and hardships, and yet when they find grace and they apply the faith that God has given them, through Christ Jesus, they'll find that they'll overcome. They can receive when the doctor says, well, there's nothing else we can do for you. Just a matter of time. That, that, that's just like when you go back to uh, Hezekiah. And God sent Isaiah to tell Hezekiah to get his house in order. He, Hezekiah was king because he was going to die. Well, if God says you're going to die, guess what? You're going to die. And so Isaiah went and told Hezekiah, get your house in order. God says you're going to die. And so Isaiah heads back, going back to the other part of the city where he lived. And Hezekiah... He turned over, it says he rolled over in his bed and started praying and said, God, haven't I done what you've asked me to do? Haven't I tried my best to do what you want me to do, to be what you want me to be? And before Isaiah got back to his home, God told me, he said, you turn around, you go back and you tell Hezekiah, that he has 15 more years, 15 more years. Now, no doubt that sort of just bum fuzzled Isaiah thing. God, you just told me, go tell me he's dying. Now you're going to tell me he's got 15 more years? Make up your mind, Lord. He's making me look like a fool. But Isaiah turned around, he went back, and he told Hezekiah, and Hezekiah lived another 15 years. What may look like it's over with, it's not with God. When we put our faith that God's given us, and we grab that grace that God has extended to us, there is no sickness, there is no problem, that God can't help us through and give him and it will give him honor and glory because you probably know as well as I do when the doctors say we can't do no more and then you show up and they run tests and you get a clean bill of health and there is no sickness they have to admit something happened. And that's when our opportunity is the grace of God happened. That I got into the Word of God. And as I got into the Word of God, my faith level started rising up. And when my faith level started rising up, I connected with the grace of God. And when the grace of God connected with my faith, the power of God inside of me that has me seated in heavenly places brought provision into my body so that health would be restored, sickness would have to leave. Or if it was his poverty, God give me the wisdom and the knowledge of how to to receive the blessings and walk in the blessings of God. So that's why we have to look at it. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that faith is not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. And, and it's in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. By the faith of who? Jesus. Paul was letting us know that we don't have the means or the ability to become born again, to enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
That is why God made it a gift to humanity to be able to receive it. You know, uh, uh, somebody may one day come up to you and say, um, you know that uh, car you always been wanting or that house you've always been wanting? Well, here's the keys to it and uh, enjoy it. And you're thinking, well, how can I afford it? It's done been paid for. See, Jesus has done been, he has done paid our sin debt. And so much more, if we learn to access with confidence, uh, by the faith of him. Jesus, when he asked his disciples, what you got to feed the 5,000 or the 4,000 people, or men, not counting the women and children. He never said, uh, go take, every, take up a collection and go to the stores and buy all you can to feed them. And he said, what have you got? And they brought, most of the time, is a few loaves of bread and a few small fishes. And Jesus thanked God. He broke the bread and the fish, and they fed thousands of people with a kid's happy meal. That's God's grace. Power, provision, Whatever you have need of, his presence. And uh, that's why faith isn't just receiving forgiveness of sin and eternity, but it's also receiving anything else of God that he has for us. Healing, finances, freedom from worry and tr oppression, all are available for deliverance through faith in God that gives us faith to be able to receive the grace which brings deliverance. Faith is a wonderful tool when it's used right. And since everything comes from God, then he gets all the honor and glory. It's not to us, but it's to him. You know, uh, I remember one time uh, I was doing part-time work for uh, Dixon's at the time. I had started pastoring out here, and, and so I was just helping off and on for a little bit. And one day I was, I would walk, to, I'd walk down to where my dad, he was a supervisor there, and uh, uh, they were at uh, Stacker right next to the main office. It's not there now. They replaced it. But uh, they had run into a problem, and uh, uh, the arms that takes the lumber over to lay on the sticks to make a stack of lumber got stuck and they were getting ready to disassemble the whole unit and God just showed me he said look at that arm and I looked at that arm and what I seen was that it had extended too far out and it, it, it let the upper part drop down and catch the lip of the lower arm and wouldn't let it retract. And, uh, and I said something to one of the uh, maintenance guys back in, and uh, I said, uh, can, can I show you something? And he said, yeah. I said, you got a pry bar? And he said, yeah. I said, have it and I just stuck it up there and popped and the arms went back and 
they were glad because that was going to be a major job. It's going to be probably shut down for several days. That saved them that work, and they were able to go back to working. They just had to retime everything on the arms and everything. And uh, I remember I, I, I made a comment. Well, at that point in time, I just went ahead and left. And, and I met the, I seen the maintenance guy at a restaurant, him and his wife. And I said something a little bit cocky. And God reprimanded me immediately. And I, I went back over, I said, listen, I said, if it hadn't been for the Lord showing me that arm, you know, that's the only reason I said for what I did to y'all when y'all was getting ready to tear it down. I said, it wasn't nothing I did. I said, it was God that helped me to see that, to show to you all. I said, I don't know anything about the staff. And, uh, he, and he said, you know, he said, I'm just glad that we, you've seen it and did say something. And, uh, and the Lord taught me, you know, uh, it's easy for us to get prideful. And that's why God gives grace to the humble. The prideful, he's going to crumble. But the humble, he's going to give his presence, his provision, and his power to. And sometimes it hurts being humble. But if you will learn to humble yourselves before God, when you're going through something, you're going to find that God's provision and God's grace your faith is going to increase and God's grace is going to increase and they're going to come together and the power of God is going to just work wonders in your life for whatever you're going through. And that's why it's so important. God gives us the faith to reach up to him to receive the grace that he is sending down to us so that we can endure, overcome, come out as super victorious, regardless of what the doctor says, regardless of what the uh, stock market says, regardless of what anybody says. So with that said, I want to stop here and we'll get into part seven tomorrow evening. Try to make it a little bit shorter but to give you to to make certain we get an understanding of God's word and how powerful it is in the book of Ephesians one of the most powerful books that Paul wrote so as always if you've never accepted the Lord or if you strayed from God how many know somebody that has just sort of chilled out on God. They're not as excited about God. They're not as hungry for the Word of God. Their attendance to the house of God has dwindled. God is wanting to refresh you, renew you, energize you, get you back on the right path. Because he wants us to assemble together. So if you sort of got cool on God, and I don't mean cool in the good way, but cool in instead of being hot for Lord, fire for Lord, you sort of lukewarm or getting cooler, just right now ask him to forgive you. First John 1, 9. If we'll confess our sins, he's faithful and just forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. He wants to restore us. If you've never accepted Jesus, today's the greatest day that you'll ever have. And when you do, 
take the faith that God has given you and grab the grace that God is sending you and watch him do a miracle in your life. So with that said, let's just pray this simple prayer. Father God, we just come to you right now in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, just forgive us of all of our sins, our faults, our shortcomings, our failures. And fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with that fire in the bones that, that wants to serve you to the fullest so that we can give you honor and glory in everything that we do. And Lord, I just thank you and I praise you, Lord God. And Lord, while I'm praying, I just want to pray for, for people that we know that is going through some difficult times, sicknesses, Lord God. Lord, when you was beaten, being taken to the cross, ever striped, is for their healing and lord i thank you right now that healing take place upon their bodies sickness leave their bodies health restored and lord we thank you and lord those that are going through other types of difficulties that lord you just help them to overcome and to receive the provisions that you have for them and so, Lord, keep them safe, keep them sound, use them for your honor and glory. And we ask this and thank you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, God bless you. Look forward to tomorrow evening as we go into part seven of God's plan for our lives. And I hope and that you get something out of each one of these teachings. Invite you to come join us on Sunday at Mountain Harvest Church at 11 o'clock. Love to have you come, be part of the family, and fellowship in the Word of God. And so with that said, have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow evening.